Good morning, beautiful friends. How are you? I hope you're well. We are striding into a new week. Well, it's Tuesday today. Yesterday was another wet day. Um, Jeff and I did complete our walk, but we were just hood up and wet the whole time. It's a bit miserable actually. So, today it's a bit brighter. So, we're heading through the woods. And we are going to um, some lakes to see if we can see any more ducklings or goslings. There might be some goose babies too. No, they're swans, aren't they? Signets are. Oh, I don't know. You know what I mean. Any babies will do. So, about our little clattering bird. <laughs> um. Linda, he left a comment saying it was a bird called a stone chat. Well, I thought that was brilliant. I thought you were taking the mickey and being funny. <laughs> and I found it really funny. And I said to Nick, I was telling him, and I said, oh, there it is now. Um, I said to Nick, <laughs> Linda, Linda's saying there's a bird called a chattering stone or a stone chat or something and he said oh there is there is a bird called a stone chat so I looked it up and you're right that's exactly the bird that I could hear which makes complete sense because it literally sounds like two stones or two marbles being hit together oh, I wondered what that noise was um so yeah it's a stone chat a few of you had said the bird was called a black cap and I think from what I gather you have played my recording into your bird identification app and it's picked up on this black cap and I'm sure I'm sure you're right I'm sure there is a black cap there but I've been onto the RSPB website where you can listen to all different bird songs and a black cap is very much like that of a blackbird. It's really lyrical, really melodic. Um, yeah, not really not dissimilar to a blackbird. So I don't think he's our little stone bashing friend. I'm going to download one of these apps though. I think it's lovely. Joe, um, hello lovely. You were saying that your identification app picked up is it a black cap a robin a wren and a blackbird isn't that lovely so yeah i'm gonna do that i'm gonna download that and then when i'm out walking i'm just gonna hear what's around me lovely won't it <sighs> lovely day today I've started to not wear a jacket or bring a coat because I just get too warm. So I've just put the scarf on. Right. Let's get stomping and we'll catch up soon. got some other news to tell you. Oh, apparently I left you on a cliffhanger with regards to yoghurt. I'll come back to that. But I've got some other news to tell you. Um, I joined a walking group. Oh, I'm ever so excited. Oh, crikey, that stinks. Oh, good Lord above. Oh, this bit of stagnant water here. Absolutely putrid. Um, well, that distracted me, didn't it? Yeah, I've joined a walking group. I'm ever so excited. Um, I'm not taking Jeff. 
bit something for me to do. They meet on a Wednesday and a Friday and they vary their walks, um, all local to me, which is brilliant because I'll get to learn some new walks. Um, yeah, I think their walk averages around four and a half to five miles. So I'm gonna go there every Friday. I might, unfortunately, we're in Wales this Friday for Wonderwall, so I can't go this week. Um, but I hope to go the week after. And then we go on holiday, so that's okay. Isn't that exciting? Do you know, if you'd have asked me on March 30th, would I be joining a walking group? on April the 22nd. I don't think I would have said yes. Jeff, don't scare them. I'll bring you some duck food tomorrow. We'll go to the garden centre and get you some duck food, eh? I'll bring it tomorrow for you. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll bring some tomorrow. Christmas when you come here. I'll have to come and show you. They decorate all these houses and put little elves and things in them. Oh, look, there's some more ducks there. <laughs> it's just such a beautiful day. So calm and peaceful. Everywhere I've walked today, I keep seeing little piles of wood shavings like that really really randomly placed and sporadic with no sort of regularity to them. I wonder if they're coming from a woodpecker. What do you think? Let me know. I guess it can't be from a woodpecker because look there's another pile there and there's not even a tree around me. It can't be. I'm back home now. Wasn't that a lovely walk? I really, really enjoy going round um, those little pools and ponds. I, well, obviously, because of all the ducks, I adore them. So, yeah, the rest of our walk home was through a housing estate. And I always feel a bit, a bit conscious of filming around people's homes. It doesn't feel natural. So, yeah, I'm back home. I'm not going into work today. I'm staying home because I've got quite a lot of jobs to get done here. And they're all sort of kitchen related jobs. I've just drained off some chicken stock that I had going overnight in the slow cooker. So I need to get that into jars and in the fridge and freezer. I need to make a batch of granola. I need to make bread. I've got to do yoghurt. We're all but out of laundry liquid. So I need to make another batch of that. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of jobs, which I really, really enjoy. They're all 
yeah, they're just sort of things I enjoy doing. But I thought, um, because yesterday I had a few questions about yoga. Brendy, I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger. <laughs> um, all I was saying was that we we buy a lot of yoghurt. Um, Mum, Dad and I have it every morning for breakfast with granola and a drizzle of honey. And then quite often Mum and Dad have it after dinner as well, just as a with some jelly for pudding. And consequently, we do we do go through quite a lot. We have natural Greek yoghurt and we also have the little pots of flavoured yoghurts, which we've been trying to move away from. We're trying to eliminate a lot of the sweeteners and additives and things from our from our diet. And a yoghurt is a really easy way of of removing that. So in making our own yoghurt, we're not only saving money because the finances really do stack up. I've done the math and it really does make a considerable difference. So we're saving money, we're removing um, sweeteners and additives from our another product within our diet and plastic. We, we probably save in about 12 to 15 yogurt pots a week, which is phenomenal, isn't it? When you think over a month, that's 45, 50 pieces of plastic eliminated. So that is brilliant. I'm really, really pleased with that. Heidi, I know you asked about making yoghurt. There's so much on YouTube and online. I struggled actually to find one that was UK based. A lot of it was all US based. And I might be wrong, but I think your rules and regulations with regards to milk and sterilisation, pasteurisation, etc. are slightly different in the US. Because it all, it, a lot of the videos refer to raw milk. Now, a lot of these are coming from people with a homestead or their own livestock. So they milk their cow and they use the milk, which obviously is, is raw milk. It hasn't been processed at all. Um, but yeah, obviously we don't have that here so much. I, I don't have that. Um, a lot of the videos for the US said about using filtered milk and again I think that's to do a, a lot of that's to do with the sterilization and pasteurization um, so I haven't used filtered milk you can get filtered milk milk in the UK it's the Cravendale type I just use normal cow's milk and essentially all yogurt is is the introduction of a live bacteria namely yogurt into milk to cultivate it, to sour it, to make turn it into yogurt. And that's essentially it. Needs a bit of heat. Um, that's time and time. So the first time you make yogurt, I would suggest that you um you invest in a really nice yogurt that's going to be the base or the starter of all your subsequent yogurts. So I would therefore invest in a nice one. We use Geo Valley Organic. Um, which is a really nice, thick, natural Greek yoghurt. The most important thing is that the ingredients can only be the live bacteria and milk. That's it. You can't have anything else. Um, but it's the taste. So find one that you really like the taste of and then just use that because that will be the taste of your future yoghurts. So from when you've made a batch of homemade yogurt, then what you do is put a few dollops in a jar, leave that in the fridge, and then that becomes your starter for your next batch. So I'll use this today. And then when this is ready tomorrow, I'll take a few scoops off and, and go forward again. I've got an instant pot. I bought this about six or seven years ago, and I've used it once, twice, three times at a push but it does have a yoghurt function on it. So I will never ever part with it now, if only to make yoghurt. So I'll show you around, show you what I'm doing, shall I? Essentially, you need to heat your milk up to about 168 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you need to reduce the temperature back down to about 110. And that again is just about killing any bad bacteria in the milk before you add the good bacteria. It's just below boiling. You don't want your milk boiling rapidly, but it's just at the at the cusp of boiling. 
the instant pot that does that for you there is a function on it um it within the yogurt setting but if you don't have an instant pot you can just do it on the hob i believe you can do it in the slow cooker although you would have to scald your milk first before you put it into the slow cooker my worry with that is i use my slow cooker all the time for rendering down chicken stock and things and i just wonder if it would taint if it would flavor so that i've i don't know each to their own if you don't have any of those things you can bring your milk up to scold reduce the temperature add in your yogurt starter and then you can just keep it somewhere on top of um a radiator that's on low if you've got a warm airing cupboard if you've got um oh gosh you could even sit it on top of a hot water bottle wrapped in blankets and pop it in a cupboard overnight to keep warm um that would really be all it would need and it takes about eight nine hours so yeah that's it <laughs> this is not a how-to this is just what i do so yeah let's just put that out there this is not a how-to video it's just a what i do video but i'll show you so the instant pot really does make this the easiest task in the world so i'm just going to put in four pints of milk into the instant pot you could halve this if you didn't have as large a family or as we do but it does keep for a couple of weeks oh something falling out of the cupboard so press my yogurt button press my more oh, till it gets to boil and leave it here we go it will beep at me when it's done So the boil button on my milk has just beeped, but I suspect it won't be to temperature, but we'll double check. We're looking for it to get to about 168. No. So that's okay. I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to press the saute button and I'm going to just saute it for a few minutes just to bring it up to temperature. Won't take long if anybody's used the instant pot, the saute button's really quick. Here we are, we're about at temperature now. So I'm going to take this from the heat now and cool it down. I'm going to put it in a bowl of cold water just to speed the process and I'm just going to bring it back down to about 110 and the reason we do that is so that we don't kill the live bacteria as we introduce it to the milk. Here we go, so the yogurt's down to about 110 now. So I'm going to introduce my starter. It's a couple of spoonfuls but honestly you don't need to be too what's it about it just whack it in i put a little bit of the warmed milk into a bowl and add the yogurt that way otherwise i don't know i find you can't mix it quite the same so you can give it a good mix in here and make sure it's all incorporated the starter before you add it back to your instant pot and then i'm going to set that for eight hours on the yogurt function and then that's it that's it job done for me so that's it really that's as easy as yogurt is in the instant pot it's now i've set the time i've set the program on the yogurt setting now for eight hours um and yeah it will beep when it goes off and then i'll let it cool for a little bit and pop it in the fridge before i go to bed and then in the morning you've got nice thick natural yogurt delicious it's good to eat straight away. You can use it that next morning for breakfast. Um, we do like a thicker strained Greek style yogurt. So we did buy a couple of these from Amazon. They've got like a fine mesh filter. Um, we strain the yogurt in there. And that takes another sort of day really. But I mean, we'll keep eating it in between. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does strain off a lot of the whey. Don't chuck that though. 
the whey pro the whey is absolutely full of proteins and if you um if you know people that go to the gym and use like protein powders and those shakes and things they're absolutely packed full of whey protein so yeah really good for you so don't throw it away um how do i use mine a couple of ways really i when we're making homemade bread which we do almost every other day i say we i where I might have 320 mils of water, I'll put 100 ml of whey in and then 220 mils of water. So we use it that way. Mum will stir a little bit into her porridge as well, just as a substitute to some of the milk. She'll just add a bit of that in. And it's just a way of really boosting your protein intake, really. So yeah, don't, don't chuck it. It's liquid gold, that is. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can freeze it. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to, but I, I would have to do a bit of research on it. I don't know, but we, um, yeah, we just tend to keep it in the fridge in this little container and then just add it, add the protein into all the bits. If you're introducing children to, or yourselves actually, because natural unsweetened yogurt is quite acidic, it is quite tart, and if you're used to like like I was just using um, eating flavored yogurts from the supermarket it, it to your taste buds it will be quite a, a significant difference if you want to sweeten it with honey like that's absolutely fine and lovely but if you really want to transition more gently and you want to get children eating it add a tin of condensed milk that's perfectly fine and I mean condensed milk is it's so sweet isn't it but add that to the mix before you put it back in the instant pot and it yeah it does just sweeten it a little bit so yeah that's it i'll see you tomorrow see ya